In this video, I will be teaching you how to make a sublimation crossed headband. I will be teaching you how to sublimate the fabric and sew together this beautiful crossed headband. So if you want to see how to do it, just keep watching. If you're new to my channel, my name is Leslie. My channel is all about crafting on a budget. I do Cricut, sublimation, and sewing videos. So if any of those things interest you, please consider subscribing, joining my YouTube family, and let's get to talking about what materials we're going to need for this project. For this project, you're going to need some polyester fabric. Make sure that whatever polyester fabric you're using has some stretch to it. This one has a lot of stretch going one way. So it's, it does have some stretch the opposite way, but make sure that whatever fabric you get has stretch to it because if not, it's not gonna go on your head or fit you very well. You need to have your design sublimated on some sublimation paper with sublimation ink using your sublimation printer and I say that because a lot of people ask if you can do this on a regular inkjet printer and you cannot unless it is converted to a sublimation printer so I can only print eight and a half by 14 so I had to make two designs that I'm gonna have to tape together to make one Big design so your headband is going to be anywhere from 22 to 24 inches long um, so I made mine 23 inches just measure the size of your head so that you can know which size you will need and I made it about in height just because I know my fabric is going to shrink a little bit so I'm trying to give it a little bit of room um, for that that's why I made it bigger than I intended which for me, it would be 22 inches, but I'm making it 23 just to, again, just accommodate for that shrinkage that will probably happen with my fabric. If you have a design like mine, you're going to need paper trimmer to cut it so that you can tape it together. You need some heat tape to tape your design together as well as tape it to your fabric. You need some fabric scissors or rotary cutter. If you have a rotary cutter, you need a mat as well. All of this will be linked down below. You need your heat press, your sewing machine, and some butcher paper. You're also gonna need some pins and clips or clips, whichever one you prefer. So now let's work on cutting our design. So now we have our design and we're going to be trimming the sides. You don't have to worry about the top and the bottom. We're just gonna be trimming the side so that we can match it up. I'm just gonna trim both sides. A paper trimmer comes really in handy because you're able to get really close. So I am trimming it so that there's a little bit of my design that I'm trimming off. That way I can make sure that I don't have any white spots. You only need to trim the edge that you're going to be taping together. Okay, so now that we have our edges trimmed, we're going to line up our design. You wanna just make sure you're lining it up and everything is matching up, nothing is centered wrong. Once you have a part of your design lined up, you can tape that side so that it doesn't budge. And then you can tape the other side as well once that side is lined up. Now I'm just going to take my paper, I'm going to flip it, and I'm going to tape along this seam right here. Okay, so now our design is ready to go. Now we're going to take our fabric, and we are. I already pre-washed my fabric. And I'm going to make sure that whatever side I am subbing on is the side with the most stretch. So for me, it's this way. So now we're going to take a lint roller and we're going to lint roll our fabric. And we do this so that our lint doesn't turn blue when we are sublimating. Okay, so once you have it lint rolled, we're going to get our design and we are going to place it on our fabric. 
Make sure there's no wrinkles underneath it and make sure you're not putting your design on the salvage, which is the part at the end that looks a bit different. You can see a bunch of holes on it. And we're gonna take our heat tape and we are going to tape down our design all around. If you prefer um, adhesive spray, you can use that as well. So once that is taped down, we're gonna take our rotary cutter or fabric scissors, whatever you prefer, and we're just gonna cut around it. Okay, so now that we have our design all taped out, I'm actually just gonna take some butcher paper and I'm gonna cut it the length of my design. I might have to do this in two presses just because my heat press is not good enough. I'm gonna put my fabric and my design on top of it. And then if you want, you can tape down your fabric to your butcher paper if you feel like that's necessary so that it doesn't move, especially if you have to do more than one press. Okay, so now that I have it all taped up, I'm gonna get some more butcher paper so that I can put on top. Okay, so now we're gonna move to our heat press so that we can press this. Okay, so I have my design. And I'm gonna have to do mine in two presses. So I'm gonna put in as much as I can. Really, it's just a little bit that I'm gonna have to do in the second press. I'm just gonna press this first part at 385 degrees for 60 seconds. So now I'm just going to grab it and I'm going to take the part out that already got sewed on. I'm just going to gently rotate it. And I'm going to let the part that I subbed on just hang down. And I'm going to press it again at same temperature and same time. Now I'm just going to take off the... Quickly took it off, very gently because you don't want to stretch the fabric, so don't pull on it too much when you're doing this. But you can see this is my ink release, the same all throughout, even where the we, even where the paper is taped together. Our design looks good. You can't tell where the where the design was taped together, which is what you want. You want to make sure when you cut those papers, there's no white parts there so now we're gonna move to cutting our fabric to prepare it for sewing have pressed our design we're going to cut it out so i find it easier to use a ruler for this an acrylic ruler you can just cut it out by just simply following it but i'm going to use a ruler just because that's going to really help me have nice straight lines so i'm going to take my ruler I'm just going to line it up with my edge and I'm going to take it and I'm just going to cut along my ruler and you'll have a nice straight edge there. I aligned my ruler with the dots on my cutting mat which helped me make sure that it was even. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, just lining up my ruler. I'll have the rulers linked down below. Just like that and then on the long side I'm gonna do the same thing and it doesn't have to be extremely perfect because this edge is gonna be sewn in now that we have cut our fabric we are going to take it and this is where your pins or your clips are gonna come in handy so we're gonna take it lengthwise we're gonna fold it in half and we're gonna clip it or pin it all the way across. Matching up your corners, take your pin. And when you pin, make sure you're putting your pins in the direction that you're gonna be sewing. So we're gonna be sewing ours this way, right? 
I'm gonna be starting on this end and going all the way down to this end. So put your pins, the pin heads facing this way so that you can easily just, when you're sewing, as you're getting to that pin. If you put it the other way, it might, not, it's just gonna be more inconvenient for you unless you're left-handed then maybe it would be easier. And you can put as many pins as you need or as little pins as you need. And know that when you're sewing with a stretchy fabric, it might shift on you when you're sewing with it. So maybe you'll need more pins so that you can make sure that it ends up straight. Okay, so now that we have it all pinned, we're gonna go to our sewing machine and we're gonna just do a one fourth of an inch of a seam allowance all the way through. When you're sewing, it might be helpful to have your pin cushion here inside of the throat of your machine. You can also have a stiletto and a stiletto is going to help you hold the fabric and kind of put it through and it's able to get closer to the needle than your finger can. Um, if you're sewing a one fourth of a seam allowance, I have a one fourth foot on my sewing machine and it has a guide so it stops the fabric from coming out from it, which is really handy. So I'm going to take out my first pin and I'm going to line up my fabric by where my needle is. And I'm just going to start stitching all the way across. When I come to my pin, I take it out and you see how easy that was? Just put it right there. So we sewed our fabric all the way through at a one fourth seam allowance. Now we're gonna trim that bulk. You can just trim it with your fabric scissors or you can get some pinking shears, which are just these shears right here that are gonna help it not fray. It kinda mimics a zigzag so just trim all the way through getting close to that stitch line but not cutting through the stitches okay so now we have that all trimmed and now we're gonna flip it to the right side so you have your seam in the middle you're gonna flip it over bring your corner your parts inside you want to make sure that seam is right in the middle now with your seams outside facing you you're going to take the right side of this side right here and you're going to bring it and line it up towards the middle then you're going to take the other side the left side and you're going to bring that over on the other side of the back piece and you're going to line that up and you're going to bring that and line it up to the middle seam that's right here now you're gonna take the remaining piece on the right and you're gonna bring that over to the left, just like that. And now we just have this big bulky seam and you can clip it until you get to the sewing machine. We're gonna stitch all the way across, then back stitch all the way back and then stitch again. And then when you flip it, we're gonna have a nice headband. Okay, so I'm going to do a 3 8 of a seam allowance just because I want to make sure that it's going to be fine. So line up your fabric. Line up the right side of your fabric with the 3 8 mark. Make sure that everything is lined up perfectly. Okay, so now that we have it all sewed up, we're going to take our fabric scissors and we're just going to trim. Make sure you trim your threads as well. Okay. So then you're going to flip it to the right side and you're just going to open it up like that. And now you have this beautiful twisted headband. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know down below in the comments any questions you might have. And be on the lookout, guys, because things are coming. I am going to be doing, I'm going to be selling a course. And in this course, I will be teaching you 
how to do sublimation and sew bell bottoms as well as a cute shirt. So we're gonna be doing a whole outfit and a sub and sew headband for toddlers and babies. So be on the lookout for that. Let me know down below if you're excited about that. I am going to be starting a membership soon and I am going to be pouring into you guys and just doing lots of classes for sublimation and sewing and anything you guys wanna see. So be on the lookout for that. Let me know down below if that is something you are interested in and are excited about. And thank you guys so much for supporting me. Getting closer and closer to 10,000. I will be trying to be more active in the comments and try to be more active on Instagram. So go follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I'm gonna be making an effort, you guys. So again, be on the lookout for my membership that will be coming soon. And by soon, I mean probably next month. So be on the lookout for that. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.